welcome you to this first interactive session of this year 2021. Our topic has been greater victory. And our text is from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 57. By now, I believe everyone who has been connecting, you can say that by heart. The scripture states, but thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And so we say it boldly and confidently that greater victory comes from Jesus Christ. And that the ultimate victory is victory over death and victory for eternal life. Remember in our previous study, we have said that the greatest need of man is eternal life. And God has given us that eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. As the scripture says, this is the testimony that God has given us eternal life. And this life is in the Son, Jesus Christ. He that has the Son has life. He that does not have the Son of God does not have life. Glory be to God. So, um, we have covered a number of uh, topics or aspects of the greater victory. We have covered victory over sickness and diseases, and we captioned that victory for divine health and victory over sickness and diseases. We've also covered victory over self, which means victory over sin, over the flesh and all evil, and also victory for righteousness, for life, eternal life, and for the power of God, victory for, for the power of God. We've also covered victory over uh, death and poverty. And that also means that we have victory for eternal life, long life, victory for prosperity. Praise the name of the Lord. And so we want to interact. Maybe you have questions and we will address those questions as God helps us. Uh, we have with us uh, two discussants, but we will also open the floor to anybody who has something to contribute. This is how we're going to run it. So I want to introduce our first discussant. Uh, our first discussant today is Mrs. Comfort Ubon Apabi. Madam, you're welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Good afternoon to everybody. You are yeah. all welcome. Thank you. Okay, the second discussion is my beloved wife, uh, the Connors Gloria Dan. You are welcome, ma'am. We want to uh, move on now. And of course, myself, uh, I will join the discussion as well, and also uh, moderate. So a number of questions have come in, um, and we will take the questions and then the discussion will give us response. So question one, sir, can somebody <laughs> pray for money without sowing seed? This came because we covered victory over poverty and over death, which means victory for prosperity and for long life and eternal life. And there we made the categorical statement that God has provided provision of blessing for his people. As you can see in Deuteronomy chapter 8. 18, that God is the one who gives us power to make wealth. And we also supported that with Galatians chapter 3, verses 13 and 14, that through G 
Jesus Christ, God has brought us into the original covenant of Abraham, that we are blessed and we are to work hard, put our faith in God, God bless our work. According to Psalm 1 verse 3, the Bible says we are like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring forth its fruit in its season. Whose leaf also shall not be that but whatever we do, we prosper. Glory be to God. So following that, this person asked this question. I think I will take this very quickly and the other discussants can comment. Now, let's read Galatians chapter 6, which is where those who tell people so sick, so sick, so sick, and then you'll be rich. Use it. So let's start Galatians chapter 6 and let's read it from verse 6 to 10. So he said, let him who is taught the word share in all good things with him who teaches. Seven, do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. For he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. But he who sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap everlasting life. Now, see the context of what this sowing and reaping was talking about. Look at nine. And let us not grow weary while doing good. For in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all especially to those who are of the household of faith. So what was the Bible talking about here? He says we should, what was the sowing? Good deeds. The sowing here was not about money. It was to do good deeds to those of the household of faith and to everyone that we meet that is with us, that is around us. So when we do that, God says, we will receive reward. And more importantly, here, the Bible says that this, our sowing should be led by the spirit. Because if we sow by the flesh, when we sow seed and say we are giving money to men so we can get more money, that is by the flesh. And it doesn't even fulfill the requirement of this scripture. Because the requirement of this scripture is that we should do by the spirit. Look at verse 8. He said, for he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. But he who sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap everlasting life. So you can see clearly here this wasn't talking about money. Look at verse 6. Again, he said, let him who taught the word share in all good things with him who teaches. Let him who is taught. So it should be voluntary and led by the spirit. And he who is taught should know that it is good to take care of the person who is laboring to teach you. But don't say because you sow to help such a person, and then you will reap money. That teaching, and we will leave it there. Let's stay by the word of God. The second scripture to emphasize is Luke chapter 6, verse 38. That's where they, they also quote, Give, and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together, and running over will be put into your bosom, for with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. Oh, may I again shock you that this giving here had absolutely nothing to do with money. Okay, if you're not convinced, go with me. Let's start from verse 33. Read with me. He said, and if you do good to those who do good, to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. 34, 
And if you lend to those from whom you hope to receive back, what credit is that to you? For even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much back. Can you see that? Sinners lend to sinners to receive as much back. So when you are giving because you are desiring to get much back, you are doing it just the way the sinners do. You are not different from them in any way. Let's go to 35. But love your enemies. Do good and lend. Hoping for nothing in return. And your reward will be great. And you will be sons of the most high. For he is kind to the unthankful and evil. Do you see the way we are supposed to show? We give knowing we are giving to God, giving because of God rather. We are giving to honor God without expecting anything back. 36. But knowing that God will reward us. 36 says, therefore be merciful just as your father also is merciful. 37. Judge not and you shall not be judged. Condemn not and you shall not be condemned. Forgive and you will be forgiven. It is from this context that 38 says, give and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. Will men put into your bosom for with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. So what was the Bible saying here? Whatever you do. God says, Yes, you get the same. So you can use this as your principle of faith to give money. But please know that it must be done for the good of humanity and service to God, not from, for your selfish return. Let God be the one who rewards you. So when people command you and order you to sow seed for money, uh, know that it is not according to the so seed for money, so your money will increase. You on your own, the principle is there. So you should know the principle of faith and apply it. Um, I think I will fail if I don't mention the experiences in the Old Testament. And the Bible also says it here. For instance, the woman with the cruise of oil, you know, and Elijah said to her, go make food for me. And then for yourself, for the cruise of God, they are not running fast. And, 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 and the jar of flour will not go empty, just paraphrasing. And God sustained them by that provision. You see, that was the service that the woman did. So God rewards. Now, the Bible says that he that gives a cup of uh, uh, water to a prophet in the name of a prophet, he receives the prophet's reward. So people use the blood. They do know that the principle to make money is very simple. You get your product, and when you are able to sell your product at a cost, that is lower than how much you got the product, you make profit. And it is how much, how you can enlarge that your profit that makes you to have money. Now, what does God then do? God gives you favor, according to Psalm 1 verse 3 that we talked about, in that work that you are doing. Whatever it is, we prosper. So, summary is that you can get money, plenty money, without sowing a single seed to anybody. However, we are encouraged. The scripture teaches us that we should do good deeds. That should be our seed. Whether it is money, whether it is helping the poor, remember Matthew chapter 25. Never forget. So, that is the response to that question. Uh, thank you. So the next question says, how should a believer approach 
his work, knowing that God gave man work. Okay, I think I have addressed that already. Yeah, so a believer should approach the work diligently. Diligently, that's the key word. And we have covered this also. Proverbs says, be a man diligent in his work. He shall not stand with mean men. He shall sit with kings. God bless you. Three. You are supposed to live till you fulfill your days here on earth and then sleep. Why then do people die prematurely, even believers? Does it mean they fulfill their days? Excellent question. So I will call Sister Comfort Ubon Aquarius to address that question. Okay. Um... Welcome, brothers and sisters, and good afternoon. Uh, the question, that question looks uh, quite interesting. But like I said, when I was trying to prepare for today's um, interactive section, the question we wanted to look at was what, what, uh, do I want God to change in my life? So when, as I was preparing this question, I was praying and God told me to go deeper. So the question I asked uh, then, I was then able to, what do I want to change in my life? Why do I want to change this? Please, I will come to that question. I'm just uh, letting you see that when you have full understanding of what you really want, all these other questions will fall into their perspective. So like I said, I now understand what this means was, what things, what are those things that hindered my relationship with God? And what are those things that prevent me from being transform into the image of Christ and those things that prevent me from receiving my rights, my authority and power as the son of God. That is Jesus, sisters and brothers. And simply put to full restoration as the son of God, sisters of Jesus Christ and brothers. So when we have all these things, we understand who we are, where we are going, then other questions will be answered and we will have full understanding. So the question, the first question is, why do we die? What does the Bible say? The scripture I would like us to say was uh, the Genesis, which, because that is where God started and gave that commandment. God said to Adam, from the day that you eat from the tree of life, the tree in the middle of the garden, and what will happen? You shall positively die. So that is why we are dying. We are dying because Adam disobeyed God and God's commandment has to come to fulfillment. The God's commandment doesn't change. So we die because we have disobeyed God. That is why that scripture, our theme text for today is very, okay, for the month, is very, very, very relevant with this question. So if we are to read that uh, first Corinthian chapter, 15 is talking what victory are we talking about that Corinthians chapter 15 verse 57 says what but thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ why what why do we say Jesus has given us victory Romans answer us. Romans chapter 6 says what? 
the wages sins pay is dead. But the life giving Jesus Christ is the life giving spirit. Sorry, uh, Romans chapter 6. For the wages of sin is death. Good. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. God. So we die because we are sinners. And also the scripture says, just as in Adam, all were dying. But in Jesus Christ, we are living. So we die because of the original sin of Adam. But we live because of the gift that God gave Christ Jesus, everlasting life. Yes, as human, living on earth with all the situation, with all the sins in the world, death continues. Death affects both the righteous and the unrighteous. But the hope of the righteous is what we have read in the scripture. That in Christ, if you have put your faith in Christ, if you are a child of God, even when you die, you have hope. Because there is everlasting life for all the children of God for all those who die in Christ. So that is why a child of God is not afraid of death. A child of God has victory over death in the sense that death is not his final reward. The final reward is everlasting life that God will give when Jesus Christ will reign as king of God's kingdom. When Jesus Christ will restore the kingdom that Adam and all those who sinned lost, Jesus Christ will restore the kingdom. And all the dead in Christ Jesus will brought back to life. Like, the, that, like, uh, like I said, if you read 1 Corinthians chapter 15, is a very nice discussion the reason christ our hope if we read first uh, 12 he says now if christ is re is preached that he has been raised from the dead how do you how do some among you say that there is no resurrection of the dead but if there is no resurrection of the dead then christ is not risen and if Christ is not risen, then our preaching is empty and your faith is also empty. Yes, and we have found false witness of God because we have a test life of God. Sorry, we have testified of God that he raised up Christ whom he did not raise up. If in fact the dead do not rise, for if the dead do not rise, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ is not risen, you faith, your faith is futile. You are still in your sin. Then also those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men the most pitiable. Okay, I, I think we'll leave it here. We will leave it here, Ma. Okay. So just your last word. So my last word is that my sister, whether we die prematurely as Christians, whether we live to our own the, the old age, know that as a, a child of God, your hope is not lost. You have the hope of everlasting life, the hope of yes. eternal life in christ jesus thank you thank you for that okay so i just quickly add to that to say that uh, the word premature should even be removed uh, listening to what sister comfort has just shared with us uh, we should remove the word premature from the, the life 
of the Christian belief. Um, yes, some live as children, some live as uh, young people in their prime, and some live as uh, in the old age. However, like our sister has told us, the important thing is the eternal life. But there is a statement I make uh, often that we live with the end all the time. We live with the end all the time. It can be anybody's end any day. It is only the grace of God that has kept us. Hallelujah. Having said that, now, there are some points here to bring up. The devil does kill. So let's know that one. Our carelessness sometimes also kill us. So if you remove those two, then I can't see any premature death in the believer. The believer's death then becomes a choice. If you remove the devil that kills, and the devil cannot kill a Christian. If you remove the carelessness, carelessness sometimes only bring to the spirit of God's leading and guidance. But the good thing is, as our sister has established, it doesn't matter at what point a believer is. He's, he has received eternal life and he is guaranteed. So God is always a winner in the life of a Christian. Because what God seeks is that soul, that righteous soul that will enter into that everlasting kingdom. It's not this world, so to speak. That's why, again, I remind us, Paul said, for me to die is gain, and to live is Christ, is to do the will of Christ. So that's the choice that. Um, I hope this explains that mystery that we often worry about. So what are we to do? We are to resist the devil, come to Jesus Christ first and foremost, leave sin, and you know the devil cannot kill you. That one is out of the question. Then don't be careless. Walk in the spirit. So, and then with that, you live to fulfill your day. Let us also not judge people. Why I say that is because um, some of us have experienced a number of things. There are times you are there praying, interceding, but the person who actually you're praying for has said, God, I want to leave. I can even tell the story of my own mother. It was always a battle between two of us. My mother would sit and tell me, I want to go. I would say, Mama, mm -mm, you won't go. And you know, just to tell you how some things, I travel for work and I, my wife is here, I was planning as soon as I returned, I will visit. I returned on a Friday, I didn't visit her. I said, okay, I'll do on Saturday. As if she knew, say, when I come, I will again tell her, don't go. That Friday, by the time I arrive on Friday, they say, Mama left yesterday. So, and I was praying for her, holding down, you know. And I, the story of another uh, minister of God praying for a family. And they prayed, they believed God, they had the word of faith that God will raise that person. The person was not going to die. But the person died. Eventually, they got to know that, that the person actually was saying to the people that were around him and said, I want to go. So that's where that choice comes. I hope this, this clarifies and puts the uh, uh, direct response to that point. Premature death is out of it. There is, we have overcome death. And let's make the choice to live and fulfill our days. And also know that while we are living and have received eternal life, any day we leave this world, 
we are good. Hallelujah. That's a blessing. God bless you. So, uh, Sister Gloria, you take the next question. The next question says, for someone struggling with loss, what steps do they take to gain victory over self so they can enjoy the benefits of the covenant of the blood of Jesus? Please, very quickly, take that. Good morning, everybody. Thank you, Pastor, for the opportunity. All right. The, the question before us, it says, for someone struggling with lust, what steps do they take to gain victory over self so they can enjoy the benefits of the covenant? Praise the Lord. That question is very relevant to the teachings we've been having. Like we know the, the, the theme we've been looking at is victory. That's the year of greater victory. And pastor has taught us about victory over self, victory over death, victory over sickness and all of that. Praise the Lord. But the ultimate victory we've been told is victory over death. But for the victory of self, I will look at that as also part of the most important victory or one of the key victories that we have to conquer flesh and self. But we cannot do this without the spirit of God. Amen. So I will say that as we have been told in the Bible, 1 Peter 2, 5 talks about us being spiritual houses built up by God himself. And why did he build us up? According to that scripture is to offer spiritual sacrifices through Jesus Christ. And this sacrifice has to be acceptable to God. And also in the scripture we've been looking at, Romans 12, 1 and 2 talks about us presenting our bodies as living sacrifices that is holy and acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service. So for us to be able to have victory over self and over the flesh, we must it, which was talked about in Galatians 5. There's the fruit of the, there's the work of the flesh in Galatians 5, 19, and then the fruit of the spirit in from 22 and 23. That's Galatians 5, 22, 23. So for us to be able to um, have victory over self, we must walk in the spirit, amen? On our own, we have no power to, to, to overcome the flesh. But through Jesus Christ, through the spirit of God in us, we are able to overcome the flesh. The, the works of the spirit, of the, the, um, if you compare the works of the flesh and the fruits of the spirit that we looked at in Galatians chapter five, you will see that the simple antidote for unforgiveness, for example, which is a work of the, the, the flesh, is love. And love is one of the fruits of the spirit, one of the aspects of the fruit of the spirit. All right, so to be able to overcome flesh, to overcome self, we must dwell in peniel, which is where we encounter God at first, and then continue and abide with him in Bethel, which is the place of God, the presence of God, where he dwells continually with us. So knowing that we are the spiritual house carrying the presence of God and we are living altars also, which is expected to sacrifice holy sacrifices to God, then we we'll practice righteousness according to the spirit and study the word of God, pray to him and he will help us. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you for that answer. So uh, just to add, you're talking about somebody, someone struggling with loss. What steps they take to gain victory. So lust here is sexual sin and all that. You must know that you are the one who opened the door for that thing to come in. Uh, you, you watch pornographic things, all that foul languages as evil association, all that. So practical steps, give your life to Jesus as has been said, and then make up your mind to refrain from those things. Don't take yourself to the place that will draw you into those bad things. Separate from those your lost full partner. Don't keep them. So like uh, uh, Nicholas Gloria said, you must break that link, that chain. God has given you victory. You are the one to practice it. So the person is the one, if you have given your life to Jesus, you just have to make up your mind and rely on the spirit of God. And then the practical steps you're talking about, you are the one to take those practical steps. 
break from whatever connection you have. If it is a man, all you, your, those your girlfriends, tell yourself no more. Don't try to still be falling around. Say, hey, no, it doesn't matter. Yeah? If you're a, a woman, break from all the men that you used to have those lost with. And then all the dirty things, like I've just said, uh, pornographic things, lost to him, all those matches, flush them out. Now, as the, uh, the speaker has already said, the consciousness that you are the temple of God. And what should the temple of God do? Read the word, prayer, worship God, do uh, good work, and you will find the transformation and practice the fruit of the Spirit. Okay, the next question says, what daily routine should a heavenly conscious person keep, maintain, or adhere to? Okay, in fact, uh, in one of our uh, interactive session, it was the Elder Nelson that addressed this. So you must have quiet time daily, daily. Have your quiet time. The time you set to fellowship with the Holy Spirit daily. And then you read your Bible, you pray. And you walk in righteousness. That's what I would call daily routine. So set the time in the day that you will daily read the Bible and pray. There are many by, uh, Christians that don't read the Bible for themselves. The Bible talks about the burial Christian. What Paul taught them. They went to set it and confirm that what he said was the truth. When you hear things, go and set. It's like when I started teaching on the uh, concept of rapture, the church will be raptured before uh, the church of Jesus Christ will be taken away, raptured before the Antichrist manifests. I took time, read the Bible, and I was shocked to see that there was no place in the Bible that talked about this. But rather, the Bible is so explicit about the things that will happen. In fact, even the time of the apostle, Peter already said the Antichrist is here, the spirit of the Antichrist. Is here. Anyway, so take time and read the Bible. Find out things for yourself in the Bible. And what you don't understand, bring for this point. Question six. How do we engage this world with all its fields and not get entangled with it? It's the same question that we have just answered. When you, are, you have the Holy Spirit, now you are called to start using the spirit of God. And that's what that Romans chapter 12, verse 1, he said your reasonable study. We as Christians must become very conscious that we have received the spirit of God. The spirit of God is power. Do the work of the evangelist. Preach Jesus. And you will find the power of God to do and rule and reign in the world without the world affecting you. Do what, be a Christian like Christ. That's why we are teaching this word. In the office, be a Christian. When other people are stealing money, don't join to steal. When other people are uh, uh, not working hard, not fulfilling their, putting the time, not being diligent, all that we have said, when you are a Christian indeed, as you have learned, the world will be influenced positively by you. The world will not influence you. Thank you. More questions came in. He said, what does Jesus mean when he says the love of money is the root of all evil? The love of money is the root of all evil. Yeah. I, I thought so. I, I don't, you said Jesus. It was First Timothy chapter 6, verse 10 that says that for the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. So you need to remind me when Jesus said that. But the Bible says so. So if you want us to address the one of the Bible, I can address. But the one of Jesus yeah, is not in my Bible. Okay. So First Timothy 6, 10. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. By Christ
craving it, some have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many sorrows. So go and read First Timothy chapter 6, verse 10. The answer is there, very clear. It says, by craving it, some have wandered away from the faith. So that's what that scripture meant. That if you as a Christian also fall into the craving for money, you, uh, there are many people who have used the pulpit today to trade. Uh, I, to trade for money. This so seed, so seed have been where somebody used the pulpit, the platform of a church that he was given. He, not his own church, he came to preach. And he just looked around and said, people should donate dollars and converted exchange rate. Ask for POS to be brought. They must pay now, 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 there. The love of money from beginning to the end. All the man was talking about was money and how he has built big mansion. The door of his mansion is as high as the altar that they were in. The love of money. So, and if I let me confess here, this is a man that I have listened to before. When I listened to that man when he started, I say, wow. But the love of money had taken that man out. Uh, this one, I'm not missing words. Because there are YouTubes all over. There are people who are saying, you can't be doing this, man of God. So uh, that's how the love of money becomes the root of evil. Anybody who craves for money, will tend to do something that is not right in order to get that money. So how are we supposed to get money then? That's why we talk about victory for prosperity. Jesus Christ has become our substitute. Do the work. Do the hard bit. Do your hard work. Pray for God's favor. Pray for God's blessing. And God will prosper you. Wisdom is really the key Right? Use wisdom. Ask God to give you wisdom. Give you the strategy to make money. God will help you to give you the strategy. Um, last question. What is the connection between the laws and grace? Does grace abolish the law? If you're talking about the law that was given to the children of Israel, which is recorded in some part of Exodus and Leviticus. Yes, the uh, Mosaic law has been abolished by the grace that Jesus Christ has given us. However, note this. As I told us before, that we have come into the new covenant of the blood of Jesus. And there was the old covenant of the blood of bulls and goats under Moses. Now, that old covenant is an example of the thing, of the real thing. So there are, uh, from a principal point of view, things we can learn from it. But absolutely that law has been abolished by the new covenant in the blood of Jesus. <clears throat> so those are the questions God bless you mightily I want to just uh, recap please give me a few more minutes to recap and then we will pray so I'm going to share my screen So we have been talking on greater victory, and we talk about steps for greater victory. This is important because this has been 
uh, if you like, the journey we have been following. So we have covered various aspects uh, which will cover step one and two in principle. Now we are going to go into step three. So we said that to enjoy greater victory, our focus must be to work closely with the Holy Spirit who helps us to get more in life. Hallelujah. God has given us his Holy Spirit. He's our helper. We are to work closely with him. And then we put down these steps that we must make up our minds to glorify God with our lives. Make up your mind to glorify God with your life. Be determined about it. Number two, give your life to Jesus and abide in Christ. Especially in this year, 2021, you need to abide in Christ. And so is this life of abiding in Christ we have talked about so far, all those aspects of victory. Step three, exercise faith in God and his word. And we have talked about faith word, faith works, faith results. Step four, develop your 2021 strategic plan with the help of the Holy Spirit. Step five, engage in intense prayer and confession of, the, of, of God's word over your life. Somebody who asks question about routine, this is part of that routine that you must do to continue to enjoy victory. So we are going to go into March dealing with this faith. Greater victory walking by faith or victory through faith. So that's what we're going to be focusing on. I thought I should share this to give us the picture of where we're going to in March. I will stop sharing and now I want us to pray as we round up. I believe you have picked one or two things from the session and you also have one or two things to say. So I want you to take a moment and drop a chat around that. Uh, what you have to say, what you have to contribute. Um, and also, if you would like to probably just say a word, then I will give one minute. Uh, no, no, 30 seconds, please. 30 seconds for you to say what you want to say. Anybody you want to contribute, uh, just quickly, don't mind me saying 30 seconds. You can have one minute. Um, I think I will call the names of those who have not spoken. Uh, my friend Pius today is here. Uh, Brother Pius, would you like to just open your line and say one or two things? Either something you picked up. Yes, please go ahead. Yeah, thank you, Brother G. Um, I'm, um, I just want to say that I'm... Um, I'm blessed by the um, session. At least um, there are clear steps that we can take to attain greater victory. Uh, I think uh, the word is uh, is clear. It is in the doing of it that um, we we'll really have to step up. Thank you so much, and uh, thank you for the panelists. That was um, very insightful. Thank you. Precise. I trust you. That was excellent delivery. Thank you. Let's summarize. And then we pray. So, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we have greater victory. And we have responded to a number of questions today. We have victory. For prosperity, we have victory for life, eternal life. And we sow because we love God. We sow because we know uh, that we are to do reasonable service to help the poor, to meet the needy. Uh, our whole life we is sowing. Making money is not by sowing only. We sow as part of our life. We have said that. 
making money is that we do what is required to make money. We give service. And you know, many people don't remember that money came through barter. And that means exchange. You give something and then you get. So you give your service. If you're working, they pay you money. You give, you, you sell your goods and they pay you money like that. And if you can accumulate good profit, then you make money. So I still want to emphasize this. Inside that blessing, then, the Spirit of God helps us and we are still grateful. Many people don't realize that if you keep saving 10,000, if you want to make 100,000, for example, and you save 10,000 naira for 10 months, you have made 100,000. Is that simple? So, how much do you desire to make? A billion naira, you have the ability to make that. Just keep telling yourself and saving and working to save that much money that will make you make a billion naira. Let us pray. Greater victory, God has given us victory. And we are entering into the month of March. That month, our faith must work. There must be tangible evidence that we are serving the living God. Like our friend Father said, that it is in their doing. Let's ask, say, Father God, thank you for bringing us to the last day of February. And Lord, we thank you for the month of March that we are entering into. We ask, Lord, that in that month of March, we shall enjoy greater victory than we have ever enjoyed. We shall enjoy greater victory, or greater than what we have enjoyed in January, in February, all rolled together. Let's pray and say, Father God, teach us how to walk in faith and how to enjoy all the blessings that you have provided for us and our pocket. Thank you, our Father and our Lord. We hand over our lives to you. We have we ask that you preserve us, you protect us, you keep us according to the everlasting covenant of the blood of Jesus. Let that covenant that has brought us into life through Jesus Christ continually provide your life, your blessing, your supply, all for our benefit. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing us to the end of this meeting today. Thank you for the discussions that have contributed so immensely. Thank you for the questions that we have addressed. And Lord, we hand over to you. We ask that as we close, you will continue to teach us. And everyone who has connected upon this platform and Heard this word today, Lord. We ask that the word will not drop to the ground, but that this word will be light to your people. And Father, we ask that you go before us and bless the month of March. In that month of March, we ask, Lord, that the victory that comes by faith in Christ Jesus, faith in your word, shall be our portion. Thank you, our Lord and our God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. In case there is anybody you want to surrender your life to Jesus, particularly that person that asks about uh, victory over loss, just pray with me. Repent of your sin and tell him, Lord Jesus, take this sin out of my life. And you make up your mind and say, from today, I repent of that sin. I won't go back to it. I won't go back to loss. Break every association with those uh, uh, evil uh, friends and the almighty God forgive you all your sins and the blood of Jesus wash you and make you whole. Heavenly Father everyone that has come to you and asked for forgiveness you said you will forgive now Lord I join my faith with them and I plead your mercy upon their life. Deliver O oh Lord God Almighty whoever is struggling with loss let the spirit of loss be destroyed in that life today, in the name of Jesus. Give that your son, give that your daughter, give that brother, that sister victory over fornication, adultery, morality of any form of any kind, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I ask that everyone that have come to Jesus, Father, may you write their name 
in the Lamb's book of life. Let the blood of Jesus wash and cleanse them and make them whole today. Thank you, our Father and our God. We return all glory to you. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Father, I agree with all your children here now that you meet them at their points of need, that this week they will enjoy the greater victory that you have given to us through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God bless you, brothers and sisters, and bye.